Welcome to Cosplay Land. I am Alice and today I'm going to show you how I made my Shizuku cosplay. I started this cosplay in November or something like that. I've been thinking of doing it since I first saw the series and this was quite a while ago. And I honestly thought that this was going to be a rather easy project because it's just like fabric and it's a dress with an apron, it's not gonna be difficult, right? Uh. The idea for this cosplay is that I wanted to do some kind of structure underneath because I wanted to make it as truthful to the series as I could. Um, so I started by making kind of like a crinoline and a petticoat to put underneath so it would give the puffiness of the dress and I have already done that in the previous video where you can see how I actually made the structure and then I could put the dress on top. Of course Christmas was on the way so I left the project for a bit. <laughs> the crinoline gave me a lot of trouble and I thought the dress wouldn't because it is a dress and it should be easy but it proved to be more difficult to pattern than I thought because it has a very low neck and just many things going on so to get it right it took me a few tries and then there was the issue with the ruffles which is not an issue it just takes a long time so I literally spent a whole day just just making ruffles and and then they didn't fit and you know cosplay normal things that happens when you're doing cosplay Basically, I thought that I could have this finished in three days and it took me over a week just to sew everything and that's not counting the time for mock-ups, for making the pattern, for trials, that's just sewing from beginning to end, it, it just was a full week just sewing this dress. Because it does not look like much but it actually has like many little things and details and you have like all the trims and you have the tie and you have the colour and you have the other colour, you have the apron. So it was a never ending story and, and to be honest there was a moment in which I, I was about to just, just say like I've had enough and fortunately I didn't. I did however take a few shortcuts here and there which are okay, like perhaps this is not my cleanest work, if you look at it on the inside it's a complete mess because I couldn't be bothered just finishing every single seam, so it's okay, I'm not gonna show you, don't care. But the thing is that I managed to do it and I actually have a pattern for this cosplay, so if you wanna just spare yourself, as I always say, if you wanna spare yourself some maths, and some suffering, just trying to figure out the different pieces of this cosplay, which I lost count of how many pieces it has. Um, you can always go and just download the pattern because I have already done all the maths for you, so if you want it, like, I will leave a link in the description where you can download it. I just want to make this intro very short because this is gonna be a long video, I would like to just show you the whole process of the whole dress in one video and I am just gonna try my best to reduce it as much as possible because it's basically hours and hours and hours of me sewing. I think there were over 200 files when I went to edit this video so yeah here you go enjoy! First of all, let's talk about the fabric. I just used plain cotton and polycotton from my stash, including some bed sheets that didn't fit my bed, and for the details I had some lace fabric and lots of ribbons and trims in several weeks for the different parts of the cosplay. I gathered my pattern pieces in piles for the different types of fabric and started cutting them with my rotary cutter. I find this method quicker and cleaner, but you can use scissors instead. Just remember, if you are using my patterns, that the seam allowances are not included and you will need to add an extra centimeters to the edges of your seams. Oh, and as usual, feel free to use weights or cuts to keep your fabric in place. Once I had all the pieces, it was time to do some prep. 
I made sure all my pieces had markings and notches and I added interfacing to some of them. As I mentioned before, I am using old bed sheets and some of them are a bit too thin to keep the shape I want, so I decided to interface them. The pieces I chose to interface are mostly the collar, the waistband and the bow pieces. I also did the apron ruffles because my fabric was too thin, but you shouldn't need to. After folding my waistband and straps in half, it was time to make some ruffles. In order to go quickly, I used a hand foot to do the edges of all my ruffles. Then, with my ruffler foot, I gathered all the fabric. This wasn't as easy as it seems because I did have a few problems and just had to remake the ruffles like five times because the left was wrong, but I eventually got it. As I had already tested my pattern and I knew it fits me, I decided to assemble the skirt first. This part has the most fabric and it is quite simple. And as it is a circle skirt, it is always a good idea to hang it for a bit, in case the fabric gets distorted at the hem because of gravity. I only had to put the front and back pieces right sides together and sew the sides. It was exactly the same process for the over skirt. There are several ways to attach your ruffles. You can sew them directly on top of your fabric, directly underneath, or right sides together and then top stitched. As this fabric is delicate and see-through, I chose to attach the ruffles on top using a zigzag stitch to disguise the stitches. Perfect! I then attached both layers together and the skirt was ready. Let's move on to the bodice. I wanted to be a bit fancy, so I made some tabs using ribbon. You just need to cut a small piece and fold it in half. Then you can bend the edges so they don't fray. If you quickly press them together, they get stuck to each other, but please don't burn yourself. With chalk, I marked the placement of my front ribbon. Then I placed the tabs in place, pinned them and sew them with a long basting stitch. I then could sew the lace on top. With the front piece ready, I carried on and sewed the side pieces. I put notches on the pattern to attach the pieces more easily. It is the same for the back. Notice I left the seam allowance unsewn, so I can turn my hem later. With the front and back ready, it was easy to sew the sides and the shoulders to finish the bodice. Next we have the sleeves. I made sure to place them next to each other so I don't end up sewing two right sides, because that never ever happens. Nope. Then I attach the flounces to the edges and sew them. They will be easier to sew if you cut a few snips on your curved edges. I also sew the ruffle at the edge, right sides together. With 
With the scenes facing up, I top stitched it. You may have noticed I only sew one ruffle to the sleeve, and this is because I had a bit of leftover fabric and decided to line my sleeve as well. However, I only needed to line the flounce as the rest wouldn't really be seen. It is a good idea to add some long basting stitches at the top of your sleeves now. I attached these flounces to the sleeve and I kind of messed up when I had to close it. For some reason I thought it would be a good idea to close the white fabric first and I was a bit wrong. The best way to do it, and it is exactly the same without the lining, is to fold your sleeves in half and sew the black sleeve first. Then you can do the white part as well. All that was left was gathering the top of the sleeves so they fit the bodies and sew them. With the main pieces built, it was just a matter of joining the bodies to the skirt right sides together, inserting a zipper at the back, and finish the hem. We are not done yet, we have a lot of pieces to assemble in the collar and first we need to sew the top right sides together. Once it was sewn I trimmed the edges and cut a few snips on the curve so I could turn it easier. For the bottom part I made a sandwich with my lace and also sew it together. I also turned this piece and it was time to sew both parts together. You will need to make some cuts, same as you did with the sleeves in order to sew them. Because the curve is very very pronounced, it may be a little bit difficult. Notice I first sewed the outer edge and now I can just fold the other side and top stitch it. If you did it correctly, you should have catched the folded fabric at the back. Or almost. The tie was very easy. I sew both pieces together and the knot piece in half. Then I just had to trim the edges and turn them. I folded the top edge and sew it. And I finished it by sewing the knot piece around it and inserting an elastic band. For the choker, I just cut a few pieces of fake leather and added some details like studs, a keyring and a loop from an old watch. The headband is just a bunch of fabrics put together. To make it interesting, I used my lace fabric on top of the grey one and pinned the ribbon to it. I put a piece of fabric on top and sew it, leaving a gap to turn it. Then I sew a piece of lace to the edge underneath the other layers. A 
as I didn't want to glue my flowers to the headband, I used a mini drill to make holes to the stems in order to sew them. And I also sew a couple of extra tabs to the edges so I could pin the band to my hair. And only the apron was left. So far, it may look like everything was super easy, but it actually took a long time to get all those pieces together. It was tiring, but I think I'm ready for the final stage. <laughs> Come on Alice, there's only a few pieces left to assemble. I sewed the ruffle to the edge of the apron and decided to line the back because I had an extra piece of fabric. You saw me doing the sandwich method before, just remember to clip those edges because this is very curvy and otherwise it will be difficult to turn it. I top stitched the edges so they let flat and decided to pleat the top instead of gathering it. I also attached the waistband and top stitched it. The apron closes at the back with hooks and eyes. And for the straps, I sew the ruffles similar to how I did with the waistband and made buttonholes at both ends. I absolutely hate making buttonholes, but they are the best option to attach them to the apron. You can sew them instead, but it may not look as neat as the fabric may not go straight. As a final touch, I made a bow sewing the pieces together, turning them and hand sewing them in place. And my dress was finished. It is time for the big reveal! Nah, this is boring. I said, big reveal! enjoyed this project. I had lots of fun making it and I learned lots of new tricks. Remember that if you want to support me and keep all this free content coming, you can do so by simply clicking the like button or leaving me a comment. 
next project is all about goth vibes and I am joining Casey Renee Cosplay with her Halloween initiative to bring you back a bit of Halloween this February. I cannot wait to show you! Until then, I will be seeing you in my next adventure. Bye!